Welcome everybody. Tonight is like no other. Now you might be indoors, but you are going to be right here. I'm Chef Jeff Philbin. I'm joined here with Chef Jason Bamford from Elevage at the Epicurean Hotel. And we are right now inside the signature theater of the Epicurean. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wait, I thought I had to go to the hotel to be able to experience all the great things that Chef Jason and his team are doing. Not true. COVID-19 might be keeping you indoors, but you can still have so much fun. And over the course of the next hour or so, we're going to be cooking some great dishes together, talking a little bit about what Easter is going to be all about and how you can use the Epicurean and all of the great opportunities here to bring some of what they do best back home. Jason, it's so great to be in the kitchen with you. I've missed you, my friend. Thank you. Welcome. Good to see you again. I mean, like, you know, you've given me the opportunity to have so many cool dinner experiences here inside the Epicurean. And right now we can't do that the way that we used to be able to do and have this whole room filled with so many people having some fun. And I'm sure it's the same thing for you being over on the other side with the restaurant, but you've been able to pivot. You've been able to adapt and you've been able to have some fun in the process. Yeah, definitely. So originally when this all first happened, we tried to do just the takeout food, right? And that wasn't working as well as we thought it would. So we kind of converted really quick into a grocery. We saw a need for items that people couldn't get at their local grocery store and we started serving them right in our market. Um, so it's great. People can call, place an order, uh, our menus online so they can see the whole menu and, you know, online and then, and then place their order on the phone. They drive, they pick a time slot. They drive right up to our door and we have somebody that goes out, takes their credit card, brings out the order and the whole transaction is done without leaving your car. I love it. And so tonight's dishes, because we're going to be doing four dishes, but the first dish that we're doing, this is a kit that you can be able to sell to the people here in South Tampa and all of Tampa Bay that really wants to have something that is worthy of Elevage and the Epicurean. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the ingredients that we sell in our market and we're going to prepare kind of make a dish out of it, right? So people can see how they can buy different items, mix and match, and kind of come up with a dish. So at home, you could be able to do this. Chef Jason is going to walk us through how to make these incredible dishes. And let's start with the first one. What are we working with tonight? So tonight we have a, a piece of our salmon, our, our coho salmon that we have. It's a six ounce piece skin on. Um, we have our chickpea salad that we're actually going to do a quick saute on with a little chicken stock to kind of change it from a cold salad. And then we have a little bit of our baba ganoush that you can also get from the market. And we'll use that as kind of like a little puree on, on the side of the dish. I love it. I love it. So you know what? I want to learn how you're going to be doing this. You at home, I really would love for you to be able to follow along. If there's some comments on the bottom, please jump in because we want to know what's going on. We want to hear it. We want to see it. And we want you to be a part of this whole process. If you are going to be doing this and doing this at home, I want you to take those pictures. At home, take the pictures of this dish at the next time that you do this. Make sure to tag the Epicurean in all of your posts, as well as Elevage, so that way then we can see it. I want to know how it's going, so if you want to tag Chef Jeff Philbin in it, we can totally have some fun all together. So Jason, we're just going to start here, it sounds like, with just a nice uh, cold pan here that you start off and just bring it up to Correct. temperature with some olive oil. Is that what we're using? Yeah, exactly. I use a lot of olive oil, um, so we'll just bring that pan up so it... it it starts cooking the fish and the fish skin won't stick. Uh, if you start it off uh, too cold, you know, you might have a problem with the skin sticking. Absolutely. What are some tricks for someone at home that might be afraid to cook salmon because, you know, the temperature might not be right. The scoring might not be right. What are some home tips that someone could be able to do to make a really great, you know, perfect skin salmon? Well, I, I like to start, like you said, with olive oil. Mm -hmm. You let it heat up slightly. Uh, it doesn't need to be screaming hot. Uh, you don't want to splatter yourself when you put the, the salmon in because there's going to be moisture in it, right? Sure. So, so after that gets a little warm, I, I take my seasoning. Um, I don't season the salmon too early because if you do do that, salt, you know, causes things to sweat. So that will yep. actually bring the moisture out and then you won't get that nice sear on the salmon. Uh, so we season it up. When you lay it down, you always want to lay it down away from you, okay? You never want, you never want the salmon to go towards you because then you can kind of splash up. And, you and don't then that splatter just gets right back into exactly. you in the first place. Okay. You don't want that. I love that. Now, this is, for me, a real treat because I love cooking salmon. I'm sure you at home love to cook salmon as well. Or you love to go out here to the Epicurean and to really enjoy the experiences. But right now, we're all living in different times. And this is what's so unique about where we're at is that you don't have to just necessarily think that because you're home, you can't do great elevated dishes. 
This is why Chef Jason has prepared these kits for you to be able to purchase and to be able to replicate back home. And you can be able to do this. This is not really that, you know. No, hard. it's it's a couple step process and then you have a meal. So it's really easy to do. Okay. So with, with, with a piece of fish or salmon, um, especially skin on, since it has that extra layer of, of fat in between the skin, mm -hmm. I, I tend to cook the salmon about 80% on one side, okay. right? So we'll just leave it uh, in this pan and it will slowly start to come up, right? So as we do that, we're gonna get another pan warm. Um, and, and now where are we at with the temperature right now on your on your range? I mean, right now I'm at about a medium, right? So about you, a medium heat is all that we really need to be able to do this at home. Correct, you don't want it too hot because that will burn the skin and it will cook one side too fast. You want it to kind of warm the fish through. Sure. All right, so as that, that's going, we have another pan heated up. And right here we have some of our chickpea salad. Uh, now this generally, it can be, be we, we eat it cold, but if you throw a little heat on it, it kind of changes it and you can use it for a hot dish as well, right? So what do we have inside this chickpea salad? So inside this chickpea salad, we have chickpeas, we have piquillo peppers, red onion, some baby kale, and then we have some seasonings from the, the Middle Eastern region. We have some smoked paprika, we have toasted coriander, uh, we have a little bit of cumin seed. Uh, lemon zest, lemon juice to finish it off. I really like that. It sounds like it's going to bring a nice little smokiness behind it absolutely, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. With a little bit of that nice heat as well. So that's really cool. Definitely. So this pan's a little bit warm. So we're going to take this. And we're just going to go straight into the pan. No oil, no anything. There, there's, really... there's oil in there. Okay. Um, we, we have quite a bit of oil in, in there. Usually if it, you know, it wasn't, you'd want to make sure that you have that on the... Okay. Right? So we get that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock to it. Now the chicken stock, at home, I'm sure a lot of folks have some chicken stock at, in Correct. their fridge. So this is a perfect way to be able to repurpose some items that you might already have inside your refrigerator and be able to bring them out. Now the chicken stock for you, what what way do you want to add that right now? So that's going to add a little glaze to the, to the beans, uh, kind of take the seasonings off there and kind of make a sauce out of it a little bit. Okay. Right? Add a little bit more. Wow, the smells of this are really starting to come alive. I wish that we had smell of vision right now because you at home would be absolutely loving this, but you still can be able to do this and you can be able to make sure that you get the same exact smells because right now it sounds like it's a lot of, a lot of simple dishes. You've done all the hard, heavy lifting for everyone at home right, right. now because the hard part, I think, really would come down to really making this chickpea salad, it sounds like. Yes, definitely. There's most flavors in that. So okay. here, the salmon, the salmon's getting, you know, we're about... 50% done now. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty soon it's going to be time to flip it. Mm. So you can see how it's starting to climb, you know, up, up the side of the sure. fish and you can kind of take a look at it, right? Sure, absolutely. So we're going to take it, go under it, scrape it with the skin, right? But be careful during this part so you don't spatter yourself as well. Oh, I love it. Kind of turn it over and just let it carry through like that. Now, how did you know that was the time, you know, to really kind of do that? Because you know, there's a lot of people at home when they're cooking salmon, and especially when they want to keep the skin on, you know, they take it off too soon and it hasn't started to really form that crust so it can really, you know, be able to be lifted off and stay intact. So correct, so correct. When the skin's done um, and it's ready to be flipped, you'll be able to take the corner of your spatula and lift up and it will naturally peel away. If it's not quite ready yet, you know, then you'll have a little, it'll stick a little bit. Just know that you have to wait a little bit longer, then it will release. Okay, okay. All right, so since we're almost cooked, you know, to about a medium, we're going to take it off there. Now, just let it carry through. To, to, to do anything more, they could add a little bit more. If they want to add some butter into this, exactly. some lemon, maybe some thyme, something else that they could do too with this. Absolutely. So we're going to take our plate. Okay. We're using a little bowl. We're just going to take some of our baba ganoush. Like now, as, for you at home that might not know what baba ganoush is, it's an absolutely fantastic protein dish um, that uses eggplant as the base. So walk us through a little bit about how your baba ganoush is different and what's special about it. So with this baba ganoush, we take and we smoke our eggplant uh, and we roast it until it's super soft um, and, and the sweetness comes out of the eggplant, right? Mm -hmm. So we take it with the skin on uh, and we, we puree the whole thing and we use uh, roasted garlic, roasted garlic oil, um, uh, cumin some coriander, uh, paprika, uh, and tahini, and nice. a lot of lemon juice, Nice, right? And you can use it as a component to a dish. You can just take some flatbread, some tortilla chips, and just use it as a dip. Uh, it's a great condiment to have around the house. And it's a perfect snack for a family to be able to have, because right now, so many parents 
are dealing with their kids at home. And so what used to be the living room is now maybe the classroom. And that's a perfect item to be able to have as a nice snack for the family to be able to enjoy. It's a nice snack that's healthy and it encourages the family to be able to eat right, eat light. Um, and this is all ingredients that you can be able to be able to source here because this has now become a market. It's a market for you all at home watching right now to be able to experience Elevage, the Epicurean, and bring it to your home, even if that's for your family in that school environment. So another fun-filled thing that you can have multi-uses out of this as well. Absolutely. So now we're going to take some of our warm chicken chickpea salad, place it in the plate. Our salmon's done. Oh, I absolutely love that. Put our piece of salmon on there. And then you said lemon. So we're going to take a little bit of lemon. Oh. Give it a fresh squeeze right over top. And that's just, and that's really just to brighten it up, right? I mean, it yeah, just brings a nice little freshness to it, to the acidity there, kind of breaks down what's going on with some of that smokiness, a little bit of that fattiness that you had, that nice little bit of salt. Wow. So and here so we go. This is a kit right here that people at home can be able to get and to be able to make. Correct. Folks, you all can be able to do this. You can find out all the information at the Epicurean's website. You can follow along here with this Facebook Live and certainly more of what's going to be happening across social media because this is where we get to be able to support everyone in this community that is adapting and pivoting right now. We are all in unprecedented times, but what we can be able to do is know that there's still some great ways to have a sense of normalcy. We are all scared. I get it. And we're all doing things unique and different. I get it. But what we can all do is still be able to celebrate a great meal around a great table. And Chef Jason, my friend, you've been able to just do that right now. I mean, kudos to you. I mean, I want to, I, I kind of want to try a little bit of this. I, I got to. Thank gotta, you, Chef. Yeah, I gotta, please I go gotta, for I it. I mean, I got to go into like the Baba Ganoush. Because that's <laughs> that little bit right there is, is talking my name. Can I, I'm going to try that right there. I love Baba Ganoush. I love it. <laughs> and I hope that you guys love it too. We certainly want to make sure that you guys enjoy this dish and so many more. And make sure that you comment in the, in the comments below because we want to know about what's going on. And make sure when you are doing this dish at your home to tag the Epicurean, tag Elevat, and tag Chef Jeff Philbin. Jason, thank you, Chef. Thank you.
This is a little thing we call supper club. Basically, this is just like a fancy smancy six course wine dinner. We even have our cliche wine guys. Summertime fun champagne. Uh, the beauty of working with champagne is literally it goes with almost everything. It's a palate cleanser. First wine going down right now is called a Toile. This is from the house of Chandon. It is a sparkling wine, but it is aged actually five years on the lees. It's actually made by the same guys that make Dom Perignon. And I think this first course is actually gonna be one of the most amazing. We're kind of playing off some of the classic flavors that you would normally associate with champagne, being caviar. So what you have is some white sturgeon roe, we have some pickled shallots, a little bit of cucumber, just a touch of jalapeno, and then what really just puts the dish over the top, and you will either love it or you will hate it, is sea urchin. What makes it unique, it has an iodine quality to it, which is not a flavor you usually associate with food. So enjoy. Thank you. Slancha. This is 2006. Grand Vintage Moet. For the price point and the quality that's in this bottle, a lot of what doesn't go into this goes into things like Dom Perignon, because Dom Perignon is actually made at the Moet facility. The base of your dish is some toasted brioche bread, which is, for lack of a better description, that's white bread made with a boatload of butter. On top of that, stewed leeks, which leeks to me are like the most underappreciated vegetable. Some Blue Point oysters, langoustine tails. What really makes this all tied together, though, stock was actually stewed on bacon rinds itself. Everyone loves bacon. In this scenario, I'm not just being a fat kid. It actually makes sense with the champagne, though. So, enjoy. We moved and on. Welcome to back to Inside the Signature Theater here at the Epicurean Hotel. We hope that you had so much fun with that first dish. It was a winner, and we want to make sure that you get to enjoy it at home because this is such an incredible opportunity. On a weekly basis, the Epicurean has been able to turn this entire incredible beloved hotel experience into a market for the people here in Tampa. Right now, we need to rally around small businesses and we need to rally around good businesses that have been able to adapt and pivot because there is a need for us to be a part of that. And you can be able to have these incredible dishes that the team here at the Epicurean have prepared on a weekly basis. They're rotating. So if you are not following them already on social media, you want to do that. Get a part of their uh, email distribution list, and you can start your journey, be able to replicate these dishes by going to the epicureanhotel.com backslash gourmet market. All of these recipes, all of this information is changing on a weekly basis, and so we can have a lot of fun. So I'm Chef Jeff Philbin. Joining me tonight is Chef Jason Bamford. Jason, it's good to see you back here doing another dish. Dude, that baba ganoush was absolutely killer. And Thank I hope you. that you at home get to try that and really get to enjoy it. What are we doing now? Okay, so now we're going to cook another dish using ingredients that you can buy at our market. Um, so what we have here is we have a, a marinated chicken breast that's marinated with some herbs, lemon, and garlic. Uh, we have our grain salad, uh, and we have some roasted acorn squash. I absolutely love this. Now... For me at home, uh, it, you know, it was really hard to find chicken at the local grocery store. So you're selling chicken for the public. Yes, correct, correct. One thing that we've noticed is a lot of the grocery stores can't keep up with the demand, right, because of the supply chain for those grocery stores. But us as restaurant and at hotels, um, we saw our business drop drastically, right? But mm -hmm. our, our vendors still, still have supplies that they can get us. So as soon as we noticed that, we started offering things that you couldn't get in the store to the local community, and it's really caught on. I love it. So at home, you can be able to get this chicken. Now, it does it come marinated? Does it become unmarinated? So we have chicken breasts that you can buy either plain. Uh, we also have uh, the lemon the lemon herb chicken breast. We also have a shawarma marinated chicken breast. So we marinate it in our shawarma spice. And then you can grill that and, you know, make a wrap. You can add a dish, make it a dish, you know, like a shawarma panzanella. Uh, you can do all kinds of things with it. So you've got three different varieties of chicken that you Correct. can be able to get here at the Epicurean. Yes, sir. Wow. Folks, if you have not already thought about this as your go-to spot right now to be able to enjoy great products, then this should be in your consideration set. So what are we doing right now with this pan? So this pan, I just started to warm. Um, put a little bit of olive oil in it uh, to make sure the chicken breast doesn't stick. So we're going to bring that up to temperature. And now that that's warm, take our chicken breast, add a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. And what did the marinade start with, though? The, the marinade started with extra virgin olive oil, garlic, uh, parsley, a little oregano, and some lemon. Love it. All right, got that side. You're going to flip it over. A little more. And we're just using just uh, just regular table salt. We're using uh, kosher salt. Just a nice little bit of kosher salt. Correct, correct. Okay. 
So now the pan's warm, we'll take it. And just like we did with the salmon, you're gonna to wanna to lay away from you. That way the oil doesn't spatter. Now at home, you know, could they throw this onto the grill? They absolutely could cook it on the grill or bake it in the oven, okay. you know, however you prefer. Absolutely. So there's no real rhyme or reason no. for how we're doing this right now. We no, just want to have we're some just, fun. Yeah, we're just having some fun. Okay. Some people, what they can do, some options, right? Absolutely. So tonight, it's a little bit rainy here in Tampa Bay, so you might be not throwing out your, going outside with the grill. But you can do this inside the house. You can do this with a frying pan. You want to do this the next time on a grill, you certainly can. Or... To your point, you could actually throw this right into the oven. Correct. Do a nice roasted chicken. Correct. So we're going to actually use the oven right now. So right. So we have okay. the we have the oven on three seventy five. Uh, we start the chicken breast off right, starting to get a little brown. So we can go ahead and we'll add some of the slices of the, put a little oil down so it doesn't stick. Add some of the winter squash. I love winter squash, and there's so much you can do with some winter squash. Because there's a little bit more time on folks' hands right now. You know, Correct. what are some other items that they can be able to use this winter squash for if uh, they wanted to use this at home? You could make a nice soup with it. Uh, makes a really delicious soup. You could make a puree. Uh, you, you could make a hash with it. You could do all kinds of things. So it sounds like these can be a lot of family-friendly items as well. Yeah. That you could be able to bring everybody in to make the soup, to be able to make a nice spread, to be able yep. to make a nice little bit of a hash for it. So families can get involved with this as well. Exactly, exactly. And, you that. know, now that everybody has time, it's good to hang out in the kitchen. That's where all of us end up anyway. I wish that you could. I mean, right now, this was our playground to have so much fun here at the Signature Theater, here at the Epicurean Hotel. And right now, events are being postponed. If you are one of those that have the opportunity to push your event out, let's do that. Because right now, that's what a lot of people are doing. We're not going to have to live like this forever. It's just a little bit of a pause for how we were all enjoying life that we once knew it to be just a few weeks ago. We don't know when it's going to end, but what we can be able to do is to say, hey, I'm just going to postpone my event. We're just going to push it out. And we're going to be able to do that because, Chef Jason, you and I, we had so many cool events that were going to be planned. I mean, you let me play around in this kitchen all the time, and we get to do the Chef Jeff experiences. They've been working out so well. We can't wait for you all to come back to enjoy these experiences because there's a lot of love that went into these. Absolutely, all the time. We have a great time. And so I think that when you guys have the opportunity, make sure that you are now signed up for everything with the communication that's going across social media for the Epic here in Elevage Hotel. And then you can be a part of that fan base so we can be able to give you all the information for what we're doing on a regular basis via email. So you can be able to do that, learn so much more about some of these incredible dishes and how they're being rotated in. Um, by going to the epicureanhotel.com to be able to be a part of everything and for the market backslash gourmet market. All right, Chef. Now, once we have that sear on the one side, we're going to flip over the pan. Okay. And we're just going to finish it in the oven, right? Now, did you put any other ingredients into the pan before it goes into the oven? Any more oil or anything? I just used the oil that was there okay. in, in, in the seasonings. Um, that we already had marinated the chicken with. Okay, okay. perfect. So, so we have the oven at 375. At 375. So right now we have the chicken in the oven finishing up. Uh, we have the acorn squash that's coming up in the pan. So now we'll take this pan that we had warming up in the back. We put a little bit of uh, olive oil in it. Okay. Extra virgin. And then we have our grain salad here, right? Now the grain salad. Now if I was to be able to order this from you, how are they coming? How is it prepared? Are we doing it in sizes? We're selling we them by the, our salads are being sold by the pint and by the quart. I love okay. it. All right. So what is a so what is a pint? Uh, go for it. Uh, so we we have uh, ten dollar ten dollar quarts. And, okay. And so if they wanted a pint, it would be half that cost. Okay. So for five bucks, if you were thinking about just doing something for date night at the house, you could be able to do it. If you want to have a little bit more, and you pay ten bucks, and now you have some leftovers, and you've got incredible incredible dishes here. So walk me through what's inside this grain salad. So here we have a, a, a mix of grains, some heirloom red rice, some uh, whole grain brown rice, black barley, a little farro. Um, in that, we cook that, and then we have some asparagus, some zucchini, a little wilted kale, and some heirloom cherry tomato. Um, and we also have a little bit of walnut pesto that we use to dress the salad with, right? Now, so, like, so you're telling me you put all of that love into it, and for 10 bucks... You can get a, you can get a quart. Because that would cost you so much at home if you were doing that yourself, and you could be able to support a small business like you guys to be able to continue to be able to do great dishes. 
And not only that, but you've got this whole give back part of it too, because you know, one of our charities that were both near and dear to our hearts is Feeding Tampa Bay. Correct. And with every purchase, you're giving back to Feeding Tampa Bay. Yes, we are. So what's going on with that? So for every purchase um, of our, so for every purchase, we give a dollar to Feeding Tampa Bay. And right now they need our help more than ever. They need our help. They are seeing an increase in some areas of 40% that has changed from before COVID-19 to now where we're at. The 10 counties that Feeding Tampa Bay serves is a testament to how we as a community need to make sure that food comes into it. There's so many right now that are watching that I know in your heart you can be able to give. I know in your heart you have the means to be able to support a great group like this because we're all in this together. But there's some that might not be able to enjoy a dish like this. And with the funds that can be coming from supporting Epicurean, you in turn are going to be supporting Feeding Tampa Bay. So your purchase can go a long way and you can be doing good things with it. And that's what we all want to be able to do because now more than ever, it matters that we can make sure that no one goes hungry. You at home don't want to go hungry. You at home have the opportunity and the privilege to cook some great dishes that Chef Jason and his team have been able to prepare at this gourmet market. But there's some that might not be able to have that. And so I ask in your heart to also consider that. If you want to learn more about Feeding Tampa Bay, please do so. FeedingTampaBay.org is their website, as well as all the social channels, Feeding Tampa Bay, across all the major ones. So you can learn more and you can also be able to be a part of being and giving back. So I didn't want to take that much away from it. But I'm telling you what, the smells here are just as incredible as they were in that first dish that you had had. So, you know, what else do we have in here that's giving some of those those nice toasted notes So that's, that's a lot of that's the walnut pesto, oh. and the herbs that are in the walnut pesto and the banyuls vinegar that, that's heating up in there. Absolutely love it. So we're going to take this, put a little bit of the salad, the warm salad down on the plate. This is another salad that, you know, was made to eat cold, but we're just showing you that you can heat it up and then it becomes a side dish for a hot meal, right? So you can use it a, a few different ways. And you know what's really cool? If you did do it cold, you can use this for a nice item outside. This makes for a beautiful way to just to enjoy the backyard. Because I know I've been playing out there with my little guy, uh, Holden, a lot more often. And so for us, this is really fun for us to be able to have something nice and cold. We can mix it up, have it warm. We get a little bit of versatility in this dish. And I think that that's a really great thing with any type of cooking that you've had. Wow. So here we have the chicken breasts. We have the squash, right? So we can take the chicken breast. You really made it simple for the folks at home to yeah. be able to enjoy the Epicurean. And all you're doing is just boxing up and saying, here it is. You can do these dishes at home. At home in a matter of minutes, as you see. Like I'm literally taking raw chicken breast, uh, the salad, the squash that we have in preparing this right in front of you guys. You've done all the heavy lifting. That's right. It. Yeah. Take a couple pieces of these. This uh, acorn squash. Absolutely incredible. Look at that. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. If you were to put this out there, how much would something like this go for right now? I mean, this is a, this is probably, you know, in a restaurant, this would be a $25 dish. And you at home can be able to do this and you can be able to learn more about how this menu is changing, how these items are changing on a weekly basis by going to the epicureanhotel.com backslash gourmet market to learn so much more about some of these ingredients and to learn more. If you've replicated this dish at home, we wanna see pictures of it. We wanna see those comments below if you've got the opportunity to have already had these ingredients at home right now, have some fun with it. Had these ingredients at home right now, have some fun with it. You can go because this was only a few minutes. But if you are going to do it at a future date, make sure to tag the Epicurean Hotel, Elevage, and of course, Chef Jeff Philbin in all of your fun. And we'll be right back.
This is a little thing we call supper club. Basically, this is just like your fancy, fancy six course wine dinner. We even have our cliche wine guys. Summertime fun champagne. Uh, the beauty of working with champagne is literally it goes with almost everything. It's a palate cleanser. First wine going down right now is called a Toile. This is from the house of Chandon. It is a sparkling wine, but it is aged actually five years on the lees. It's actually made by the same guys that make Dom Perignon. And I think this first course is actually gonna be one of the most amazing. We're kind of playing off some of the classic flavors that you would normally associate with champagne, being caviar. So what you have is some white sturgeon roe, we have some pickled shallots, a little bit of cucumber, uh, just a touch of jalapeno, and then what really just puts the dish on the top, and you will either love it or you will hate it, is sea urchin. What makes it unique, it has an iodine quality to it, which is not a flavor you usually associate with food. So enjoy. Thank you. Sláinte. Sláinte. This is 2006 Grand Vintage Moet. For the price point and the quality that's in this bottle, a lot of what doesn't go into this goes into things like Dom Perignon, because Dom Perignon is actually made at the Moet facility. The base of your dish is some toasted brioche bread, which is, for lack of a better description, that's white bread made with a boatload of butter. On top of that, stewed leeks which leeks to me are like the most underappreciated vegetable some blue point oysters langoustine tails what really makes this all tie together though stock was actually stewed on bacon rinds itself everyone loves bacon in this scenario i'm not just being a fat kid it actually makes sense with the champagne though so enjoy we moved on to 2008 what champagne needs is more age why because acidity the acidity in champagne is huge, and that's another reason why it pairs so well with food. To taste it, see what you guys think. This one is drier. It's yes, drier definitely drier. The eight is what we're pairing with this coming dish, but I wanted to make sure you guys at least had a chance to compare and contrast. So, guinea hen, in, in my opinion, is what chicken should taste like. What we have here is multiple preparations of singular bird. So the breast has been sous vide with butter and bourbon, a agnolotti, which are the little dumplings. Inside the agnolotti are the legs of the guinea hen that we packed with salt and sugar and then poached in duck fat. So basically it made a puree of the confit of the leg. So it's literally just a composition of the same bird treated four different ways. So enjoy it. Getting people drunk in like casual conversation, we love. Vintage champagne, very low in sugar, only about five grams. So this is the 08 Grand Vintage Moet. This rosé specifically being as dry and I think as big and bold as it is, is gonna work really well with this. When I was going through multiple tastings, the thing that immediately stuck with me, and this is from our Psalms and House and different winemakers, rosé and barbecue. The smoke, the richness, the rosé, that little bit of the, the red wine that has a little bit more body can send up to it. I'm a redneck from Kentucky. Barbecue is right in my wheelhouse. So for the night, our barbecue is actually a lightly smoked embraced bill cheek. And on top of it's a barbecue sauce that's sweetened with a little bit of pomegranate molasses. Like I'm a Brussels sprout fanatic. If you eat Brussels sprouts, you know that little black crunchy edges on the outside is the best part. So that's a big pile of that on top. So enjoy. All right, let's start toasting. Dessert. I mean, dessert's another really difficult thing to pair with wine in general. But what we do have in the glass.
and welcome back to the Signature Theater here at the Epicurean Hotel. We are so delighted that you've been watching along and having some fun with us because these are dishes that Chef Jason and the team have been able to prepare with the gourmet market for you to be able to replicate. And you know what? As a young dad, there's one particular night of the week that still is fun for us, that still, no matter how much we might be scared throughout all of this pandemic, we can still have a sense of normalcy. We can bring everybody together. And that is Taco Tuesday. Why did I just do that? I still don't know. But LeBron James, I'm coming for you, my friend. I want to have that Taco Tuesday night like you. But you know what? It's not going to be anywhere in comparison to what Chef Jason and the team is doing with their Taco Tuesday. So, Jason... Your menu rotates on a weekly basis. Correct. Does Taco Tuesday now rotate it on a regular basis? Absolutely. Too? So every Tuesday we're going to change up our tacos. You know, the first round we have uh, short rib tacos. Uh, we might do ch pulled chicken tacos. We might do pork ta carnitas tacos. You know, who knows? I love that. And the only way that you're going to be able to find out what taco it's going to be per week is if you're already following along to everything across social media for what the Epicurean and Elvage is doing. So if you want to be able to see that menu, you can. And the way that you're going to have to do that is go to epicureanhotel.com slash gourmet market to be able to see those recipes, to be able to see those items, and to be able to make Taco Tuesday at home and for so many other great dishes that you've seen before, and we're still going to be having some more to come. So let's go ahead and start with what we've got for Taco Tuesday for this upcoming Tuesday. All right. So Taco Tuesday, everybody loves it, right? And everybody enjoys it as a group, right? It's never really just one or two people. You always either get together with your family or your friends. So what we did is we made kind of a four pack, right? So this is kind of a meal for four people. Um, so what we did is, you know, everybody, now that we have time, we want to be interactive, you know, with the family. So we made a taco kit. So in the kit, you know, you have this week, it's your, your short rib, uh, your black beans, a little corn salsa, some cotija cheese, uh, a little bunch of cilantro, a lime, uh, jalapeno, and then a 12-pack of tortilla shells that you can either use to make tacos or you could even make personal little quesadillas. I love this. So there's a little bit more that you can be able to spread with it. So you can be able to make sure that people have a little bit extra to work with. So 12 really can go for that quesadilla on, it exactly. on the side. So I like this. Exactly. Right. So, so, so what we'll do um, is we're going to take, and we have some of our braised short rib, right? Now walk me through a little bit the braised short ribs, because I love short ribs, and I'm sure you at home probably love short ribs, but just aren't thinking about making short ribs all the time. Jason and the team have already done all the hard work for you. They've done the heavy lifting, and so if they've done the heavy lifting for you at home, how, what were you lifting with? So what we have right here is we have some short rib. Uh, we braise it with some tomatoes, some onions, uh, some, some celery, and then some cumin, paprika, coriander, uh, and just, and just braise it so it's nice and tender. Pulled it apart, cooled it, pulled it apart. Added some of those seasonings back in. Okay. All right, so right here, we're just gonna heat up our short rib. We're gonna take our black beans. And what I really like too about how you prepared this taco kit is that because this is not going to have many uh, different ingredients that are going to just be strictly for you know taco seasoning, if someone wants to use some of these leftovers and maybe make a nice little basto if they had leftover short ribs from it, you could be able to do that. You want to add that into a nice, you know, kind Correct. of a, a, a hash in the morning or something. You could be able to do that as much as you could with the taco part of it, it sounds like as well. So a little versatility that you're thinking of. Definitely, definitely. See, and this is what we all want right now at home because there's a little bit of time on our hands. We want to think outside the box a little bit. We want to have a little bit of fun with the kitchen. Jason's prepared these kits for you to be able to do step by step. But if you want to kind of go off and detour a little bit, you still have the freedom. You still have the opportunity. And I'm sure Jason wants to see that. We want to know about it. So we want you to make sure that if you are playing around and having some fun in the kitchen, that you tag the Epicurean, Elevage, and Chef Jeff in your social media channels because we want to see these pictures. We want to see you replicate these dishes. This is a simple system that they have here. You can call in your orders. You can make your orders online. And someone here at the hotel will be able to meet you outside and take that payment. Jason, you've made it turnkey for people here. Definitely. Uh, so here we go. We're, we're heating up the beans in a pot. We have the, the uh, ribs going. So we've got um, a little bit of black beans I can see here. What else do we have in here? So we have some celery, some onions, some red pepper, uh, and then some chili powder. 
Okay. Nice. Then we braise those beans, cooked them, you know, nice and soft, tender. And I can start smelling all that opening up right now. I don't know if it's, I think it's going to be that really that short rib that's starting to get that nice little bit of a crusting right now. Um, and I'm smelling that. Delicious. So nice. So delicious, nice. delicious. Yeah, the tomato starts caramelizing, gives it a little sweetness. I love it. Now, if someone was to do the taco kit for this upcoming Tuesday, what else would they be receiving? Receiving a, a little card that's going to walk them through these steps, so they have a recipe, so they have an idea. Okay, step one, start here. Step two. Well, we kind of leave it up for their imagination. Uh, um, you know, there's a lot of different things. Like you said, you could make a quesadilla, you could make tacos. Uh, you know, if someone is, doesn't eat meat in your family, you can just use the beans and the corn salsa, and you know, in some of the cheese and the herbs, and you have a vegetarian taco. So this is for just, everyone to be able to really. And everybody has some rice, some rice in the cupboard, right? So maybe you just cook up a little rice, and you can add that to your taco as well. I'll tell you what, too, another great thing that you could be doing is thinking about outside the box, because right now, I know I just did that with some leftover lettuce that I had, and you can make a leftover lettuce that I had, and you can make a really great taco salad out of it as well. You can take these the tortillas, make little nice uh, quesadillas for it, and they can go on the side of it. So that way, then you can be able to have something a little bit lighter if you're thinking about health and you're conscientious of what's going on, because there's two schools of thought in all of this COVID-19. You either come in looking like a hero or you come out looking like a zero from it. <laughs> you get the balance of both worlds in it for how you want to approach food and how you want to engage yourself in the kitchen with your family. Uh, one of my favorites right now, too. You're going right in for some jalapenos. Yeah, I, lo I love spice, right? And uh, we, we put a jalapeno actually in the kit. So if you want to use it for that little extra spice, you can. Otherwise, you don't have to. I love it. Right, so now we have our ingredients heating up. Um, you can either use a pan, our oven's already on. Um, you can either use a pan, our oven's already on. Mm -hmm. So I'll just flash them in the oven. Just warm those up. Uh, the corn salsa, you can heat it. I don't, I tend to keep this room temperature. And what's inside the corn salsa for everyone at home that wants to know? So inside the corn salsa, we have corn that we roasted off the cob. So we can take this, now that that's warm, take it off the heat. We have our meat that's that's warm. Our shells got a little heat to them. And we're just using flour tortillas. That's flour tortillas. A of flour tortillas. So versatile because there's so many at home that are going to be doing this for their kids. And you know what? As a father of a young child, flour tortillas go a long way. Now, I sometimes like to make tacos with corn tortillas, but there's so much versatility with flour. So if you've got a family uh, that has young kids, a great item to be able to have in this kit are these flour tortillas. All right, excellent. So we're going to take a couple of our shells. All right, we're going to take some of our taco meat. Right inside there. All right, we'll take some of our beans. Put a little bit of the bean in there. You can smell that aroma. I love it's it. It's delicious. I right. absolutely love it. You can take some little corn salsa. Take a couple slices of our jalapeno. All right. Take some of our cotija cheese that comes in the kit. Such a fun cheese to work with. Oh, too. it's a great cheese. Very salty, so it seasons it as well. Mm -hmm. And then cilantro. You know, it, you don't even need to chop it. I actually prefer just pulling it, and I like some of the crunchy stem. I you know, a lot it. of people uh, pluck the leaves. I like that crunchy cilantro stem in there. I think this is going to give it a nice little bit of texture and bite because you're going to get a nice little bit of that flavor that's going to come from that jalapeno there and some of that chewiness that's going to come from the, the short ribs. You caramelize it so it brings more texture back in. But it's just another nice dimension of flavor and bite. I really, really enjoy it. And then finish it off the freshness. A little squeeze of lime juice. And you have a delicious Taco Tuesday. Oh, I love this. I can't wait for Tuesday. And I know you can either. You can get your orders today. You can make sure you can make sure you call the Epicure or you can go right to their social media, follow along with what they're doing. Check out the website, epicureanhotel.com backslash gourmet market. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to the Sager Theater here at the Epicurean Hotel. Now, I know that there's going to be some families right now that are watching this and thinking to themselves, what is it next week, Easter? And you know what? In all of what we're going through, we are losing sense of time. We're losing sense of days. But that doesn't mean that we have to think and not think about where we're at with our holidays. Next week is Easter, and you can be able to still have a sense of normalcy for a beautiful, incredible Easter dinner. You might have had your reservations here at the Epic Hearing, enjoying the great dishes that Chef Jason and his team would have been doing for you all. But you know what? You can do it at home. You can have a lot of fun. And I kid you not, the Easter Bunny's going to still come to their house. <laughs> and the Easter Bunny can if you follow these great tips with this Easter kit. First thing that's kind of caught my eye, food aside, it's still going to be about my son. And yeah. I'm sure a lot of you at home right now are thinking the same thing for your families. I see an Easter egg dye kit right now. Yes, definitely. That's one of the options that we're selling at our market right now. So, you know, this is, this is the Easter that most of us haven't experienced ever in our life, right? People still want to enjoy things, you know, reduce the stress, still have fun activities for the kids. So we figured we'd offer an Easter egg kit. And what you do is you get a dozen white eggs with that. Uh, you get a little cup of vinegar, and then you get your actual dye kit right, that you can order and just have that, you know, you can pick it up with the delivery. Uh, we're, offer, we're also offering uh, our Easter dinner to go, which we have a lot of options about, and you can just pick up one of those as you pick up your Easter dinner, then you have a complete package. I love it. And going back to the eggs for a second, because, you know, there's so many of us right now that are so scared, and there are so many of us right now that just want to make sure that the family can stay together as a unit, that the kids don't feel impacted by any of this. And as a parent myself, I want to make sure that I can be able to do the same thing with my son. Now, he knows what's going on. Right. He knows that people are sick. Right. He knows that we can't have a sense of normalcy like how we once did for now. But the kids shouldn't have to suffer. And you're giving them something that brings a sense of normalcy behind it all. And I think that's a beautiful thing because good businesses right now that we all should be rallying around are seeing that as the opportunity to be normal, to bring a sense of purpose behind it. And you watching right now at home, you're a part of that. You at home that want to support the Epicurean are doing just that. And it might be as simple as a dyed egg, but it means still so much to the people that put their heart into it because they want to make sure that we as a community have a sense of normalcy. Super, super simple uh, thing that you just did, but it stands for so much more. And I'm proud of you for doing such a cool thing. But it is a hotel. It is a restaurant, and we are adapting to these times right now. And so folks at home that are going to have a very different Easter by not going out can still bring a little bit of what you were going to do for them here at home. So what can we be prepared and expected to have at home? Absolutely. So, you know, along with the grocery, we're offering some prepared meals. And one of the things that we're doing is a holiday meal for Easter, like we talked about. Right. So what that meal can contains is you know you can either pick you can pick your protein we have a choice between uh spiral honey baked ham uh a classic a classic for for easter right we have your leg of lamb another which, classic another classic and then we have our prime rib which another classic can't get any more american classic than that right on the holidays this. right so so with that we prepared some sides that come along with it so everybody chooses a protein and then they get uh you know, portions of these sides. We have a, a cream spinach that we make instead of just cream, we use a cauliflower flour puree, right? And nice. that's the actual base to the cream spinach. Uh, we have our, our smashed red skin potatoes that we use a little extra virgin olive oil, some scallions and finish it with a little creme fraiche, right? Just to hold it together and make it creamy, but a little bit of acid from the creme fraiche. Uh, we have roasted squash. Um, so a lot of all the accompaniments that come along with an Easter dinner, you know, we'd have all that for you packaged up just for you guys to, you know, eat at home. And how is it done from a standpoint? Are we are we having them done to say, hey, I'm a family of three, I'm a family of four. Are you doing it per person? Are you doing it per group size? Per, per person, right? So you have an option. Awesome. So you can either get it per person where everybody gets something else and we package those dinners, or you guys can buy a whole roast. So I'll cut a roast to the size of your preference for your family, uh, and you can order that roast from us. You can also buy a whole leg of lamb from us for your family if you'd like, or a whole spiral ham. Now, if you have not already started to think about what your Easter plans are going to be, now is the time. You have one week to start this entire order process. Because right now, if you go to the epicureanhotel.com slash gourmet market, you can start the orders. You can make sure that you're following along with social media and getting a part of all those email blasts so you can be able to have some fun. 
on this. Correct. But not only is it fun, but it's also doing something good for the community. Community and changing our business model so we can survive. I love it. And going back to the community part, you know, a portion of sales is going to support Feeding Tampa Bay right. for this exact kit. So every for every Easter dinner that we sell, we'll donate a dollar to Feeding Tampa Bay. So a dollar a dollar of every single meal from the Easter dinner gets donated. There's so much power behind that, my friends. There's so much power in knowing that your purchase can do good unto others. For those that might be celebrating this as Easter for your Christian values and your beliefs, fantastic. Then there's that spirit to be able to give as a community, as, as, as religion has said. And if you're doing this to just have a beautiful dinner because it's a beautiful Sunday, then you're also going to be doing something special as well, knowing that you're doing good unto others just as equally as important. Because Feeding Tampa Bay needs us now more than ever. 40% increase since COVID-19 has taken charge of the Tampa Bay. You know that there are families right now that might not be able to have such an incredible dinner. They might not be able to have the eggs that we get to die and we get to have fun with. And there's families that might not be able to do that. But you that can do that can spur a little bit of generosity, a little bit of hope and some joy for those. So while you're getting to celebrate an Easter meal, while you're celebrating a beautiful Sunday dinner, if you're not celebrating Easter for its Christian values, so be. But you at home can know this. These purchases will do good for the community. These purchases of this particular Easter meal will support feeding Tampa Bay because no one should go hungry. No one should go hungry. No matter if we are rich, we are poor. We are black, we are white. We are whatever political affiliation you might be. You may love someone, you may not love someone. You may love someone different. Who cares? Right now, more than ever, we're all in this together. And right now, more than ever, a good business wants to do good unto others. So I implore you to support that because right now, they're adapting. They're pivoting. And they're making the difference. And that difference is going to make an impact in our community. You're already doing this. You've taken everything that you've been given. You've only been here for less than a year, Jason. Right. It's coming up on right. a year, right? Right. I'll be a year in June. And I'm sure at the end of June, no one would have ever thought any of this whole COVID-19 would have ever no, happened. No, not, not even crossed my mind. <laughs> and this is totally not the plan for you within your first year of being here. No. Nope. The executive chef here at the Epicure Hotel in Elevage. But you've been able to take this and run with it. You've been able to pivot. You've taken the CDC guidelines along the way of how to figure out where I'm at point A to have gotten to point B. Now we're transitioning into this gourmet market. Correct. Still bringing a sense of normalcy because at the end of the day, the conduit to all of this is good food. It's about an experience. This is an experience around the table. This is an experience that you would have been able to have had here, but you can't, but you can do it at home. And we want to see you come back here because you know what? We will be back here. When this is all gone and we've got a reason to celebrate, you can. You can book a night here when the time is right and have some fun. You can take that little weekend getaway that you've been planning for the, for the husband or for the wife or for the family and get to enjoy yourselves. There's so many great properties that Mainsail has and that you at home can be able to really learn about. You at home now have that time to start thinking outside the box. Well, when the time is right, what can I do? Where can I go? Just remember this. There were good people that were doing great things to make sure that the lights were still on and so that people could still have something to do. And you have so much that you can be able to do by starting to get this Easter meal, by giving to Feeding Tampa Bay, and by not canceling your next event, but thinking about how to postpone it and thinking about when the time is right, how you're going to come back in spades and have so much fun. Because this experience right now that we have, we're going to be able to do at home. And we want to see that. Make sure that you tag the Epicurean uh, Hotel for all of your fun that you have for your family photos across uh, Easter Sunday. Make sure that you tag Elavash and make sure that you tag Chef Jeff Philbin. I thank you so much for the time that we spent together. I hope to see you all here inside the Signature Theater at the Epicurean Hotel when the time is right for one of our Chef Jeff that we have. And our time right now is expired. I thank you so very much for joining us this evening. I thank you so much for supporting a good business. 
And I hope to see you all very soon. Good night.